Continuing our world tour of exotic lands and spicy builds, we come to the deserts of the Southlands, where a raptor rush is on the prowl. An all-cav build for the Dark Elves, looking to establish dominance upon their cold-blooded cousins. Normal Swamp commands the bleak hole Druki, and VOD Bjorn Norlander leads the Children of the Old Ones to war. Lord Mustamundi atop his palanquin throne, and a powerful HQ with elite temple guard exactly where they should be, protecting their power toad. Carrion are circling. They know there will be flesh to scavenge soon enough, and as the pyramids watch on as silent sentinels, the ancient salamander leads the way for the lizardmen. Unfortunately, not gonna be an ideal situation for him or her against all this cav. What might work great, though, is this command center around Lord Mastamundi. Two Rev Crystals and these Star Chamber Guardians should make it very difficult to isolate and murder the Slan Mage Priest, because it's not just the healing from the Bacillodons they have to worry about, it's Apotheosis too. That is a lot of HP that can get sent their way. Then of Amantok should also help a lot when Dread Knights come knocking. A lot of Skink Skirmishers, which seem to be the meta for Lizardmen these days, been seeing them a lot recently. And the Mighty Horned Ones, heavy Dino Cav that can go blow for blow with Dread Knights and the Dark Elf Elite. Line of Skink Cohort and four Feral Cold Ones with the Sally round out the Lizard Gizzards. For the mean green machine of the Druki, seeing a very strange build here consisting of only mounted troops. Normally, when you see this kind of strat, it's backed up by three or four Dark Rider crossbows with a heavy kiting element, but that won't work here with the Knights of the Ebon Claw at the helm, because there are no range units. It's a pure melee cav rush. Pretty interesting. Three Dread Knights, three Cold One Knights, the Crows of Cain Harpies, and their Crow Feast regen, and the star of the show, the Supreme Sorceress riding a corrupt black dragon into the thick of it. Soul Stealer and Opal Amulet are her only selections, which will keep her survivable and damaging blobs long into a match if used well. As things get kicked off, Normal Swamp will push the pace a bit with his mounted warriors, looking to silence that ancient salamander and these king skirmishers. Dark Riders are pure meat shields this game. They will be used to bait and force the Lizardmen to commit, which means some of them will be sacrificial lambs in lieu of the bleak swords and dread spears we would typically see in that role. Right up the center, we'll see Dark Steeds charging in, just tying up the Sally to get it to stop shooting. Kinda sucks for her, honestly. She can do decent damage to Armored Cav, but her role is really to explode tightly packed infantry. There's no infantry to shoot here, and of course, keeping her online and shooting against all these mobile elements will be no simple task. I'm not sure too much time and effort is going to be spent trying to keep her alive. But here come the Horned Ones, and this is a really smart play from the Light Cav, and a cerebral one in general from the Dark Elves. Horned Ones are by far the biggest threat on the field to them, because they hit like Temple Guard, but they have the speed to pick and choose their fights. So the Dark Riders are baiting them away from their army, which will not only give Dread Knights a chance at a flank charge here, it's also being set up by sacrificial tactics happening elsewhere on the battlefield that are stretching Bjorn's micro. One of the sneakiest ways to get an opponent to take a bad fight is to engage in multiple places at once. It makes it way more likely the mistakes get made, even against really good players. In my opinion, this is a mistake from the Lizardmen. If you are outnumbered in the cav fight, you want to keep the cav you do have in reserve, generally, to be used defensively in your back line. They can probably beat Dread Knights 1v1 with support from Mazda and all that healing, but they cannot then take on a bunch more light cav and cold ones and elite harpies piling in too. So we're going to see the Dark Elves pile in here and try to quickly get those horned ones off the field, but Apotheosis and the Rev Crystal sent their way will keep them alive for a really long time. Nicely timed, but I'd still like to see those Horned Ones used a little bit more defensively when there's so much enemy Raptor Cav to deal with. This is a tough situation for the Lizardmen. You do not expect to see this much heavy Cav for the Dark Elves, so it may take a minute to fully adjust to the Blitz. Noxious Breath ripping through the Skinks and Feral Cold Ones as the Basilodon watches on. And now comes that counterpunch in response. Horned Ones are holding on somehow, buying just enough time for Ruination of Cities to sunder the earth beneath the Dark Elves' feet. Really nice response to what looked like a bad situation. Managed to salvage a lot from a kind of bad fight. In fact, the Dark Elves will be forced into full retreat from that side. Horned Ones even managed to survive somehow, although obviously with heavily reduced numbers and health. Over on this side, though, Dark Elves are putting a lot of their Dread Knights, and they're going after the Feral Cold Ones, getting rid of that mobility game. As we saw, went for the Horn Ones first, the elite of the Lizardmen army, 
Now they want to get rid of the cheaper, lighter Raptor Cav. Once they do that, they can sweep in, get rid of the King Skirmishers, and then fully surround Mazda Mundi and his elite Temple Guard. Knights of the Ebon Claw are going to be a tough nut to crack for Lizardmen now that they don't have access to a healthy unit of Horde Ones. We just saw none of Amontot go down on the Black Dragon. Not sure if Mazda was trying to catch out the Supreme Sorceress when she was on the ground, but there wasn't a whole lot of troops nearby that could have punished it anyway. So not sure what that nut was about. Maybe just trying to get Mazda Mundi on his palanquin throne away from the big scary beast. But here comes that surge from the Dark Elf Heavy Cavalry. Knights of the Ebon Claw in the rear now going after King Skirmishers. And looks like they're going to be able to easily close that gap. Now they're going to munch and crunch. Yeah, they're more of a tin can opener. You want them fighting the really elite armored stuff. But there are so many juicy warm bodies to feast upon in the rear. And the Black Dragon looks like it wants to get stuck into the mix as well. So Dark Elves are avoiding Star Chamber Guardians, which is very logical when you have a cavalry build focused on mobility. Crows of Cain are eating some Feral Cold Ones. I'm not sure they're going to be able to survive that fight. Especially now that Star Chamber Guardians get a couple attacks in. But maybe they will be able to escape with their Crow Feast regen. Really nice play from the Cavalry, though. We're seeing great hammer and anvils, full surrounds off on the isolated infantry, and just playing that speed game. Keep away from the scary stuff that can blend your Cav and focus on all the skirmishers and squishy targets in the back line. Just saw another Apotheosis and Rev Crystal Heal sent the way of those remaining 17 Horde ones. And now is the time of the Black Dragon. Poor little skinky boys, fleeing for their lives only to be met by the rending jaws of this freakish behemoth. And the Black Dragon is a force of nature this game. Most importantly though, it is a vehicle for Soul Stealer. And we are going to see blobs start forming here. We know that. Star Chamber Guardians have to provide that bastion around Mazda Mundi. They're going to get everything they can. In fact, I'm kind of surprised that they've been spread the field as much as they did. As soon as they saw that cav fight, ideally, I think you want to get everything in together and kind of box up around your lord. But they still have that opportunity. And the threat of that soul sealer may be why the children of the old ones were reticent to make that play from the jump. They've got to be careful here. Basilodon is fully surrounded by armor-piercing cavalry. Star Chamber Guardians are stomping their way over, but that's good value for the Supreme Sorceress. Soul Sealer will hit the Star Chamber Guardians and that Basilodon Rev Crystal while the cavalry is cut down by those halberds. And how do you say that? Is that McQueedle? Macaweedle? There's going to be a For Honor here that has that weapon coming very soon that I'm excited to try out as well. Big time! Ruination of Cities hitting some of the cav that were surrounding the Ankylosaur. And another Apotheosis from Mazda Mundi keeping his Horde Ones alive. They are still alive somehow. Very impressive. Up to 81 kills on the Heavy Cavalry for the Lizardmen. 15 models remaining, 1700 HP. They've done a lot for the Lizards this game. And they're still in the fight, although maybe not for too much longer. Basilodon could not survive the surge of metal piercing its hide. Ancient Salamander also fleeing in the face of the Supreme Sorceress and her mighty steed. And that will leave those Temple Guard with a heavy burden to bear, but really a brilliant choice from the Lizardmen here because I think they're going to have all kinds of opportunities to generate good value against these Raptor Cav once they are forced to commit. And they will be at some point. At some point this game, these Cold Ones are going to have to fight Halberds in melee. And that is where the Star Chamber Guardians can start causing all kinds of problems. That is why Noxious Breaths are being sent their way. Not loving that Breath Attack. I'd like to see maybe a Dark Rider pin them in place for a second so you can get maximum value out of that cast. Only got three Breaths. You want to make sure each one of them counts. That was the second, so we'll see one more. Pathios from Mazda Mundi, keeping those Temple Guard topped off. And the Ancient Salamander has returned. So the Dark Elves from the Bleak Holds have done a good job of isolating the important targets on the Lizardmen line and killing them with their cavalry. But we see a lot of good responses from the Lizardmen as well, particularly in the form of those Ruination of Cities. Dark Elves are counterpunching back with their own Soul Stealer. And this is exactly why he didn't bring more spells. It's just Soul Stealer and Opal Amulet for the ward save. And it's because you want to get as many casts off as you possibly can alongside Arcane Conduit. It's either five or six casts that a Supreme Sorceress can throw off 
from a black dragon and with our greater arcane conduit. And that is a lot of HP, and perhaps more importantly, this game, it's a ton of damage in these blobs that will inevitably start forming. So, good on her to escape from what was going to be a very scary situation. If Majda Mundi had enough Winds of Magic for a net there, she might have dropped real low. The Star Chamber Guardians managed to get a full surround off, but now Knights of the Evan Claw kind of been in reserve. We've only seen them hunting, skiing skirmishers, and that kind of thing. Now, they've got to start fighting some of the more heavy hitter type of elements, the Feral Cold Ones, and again, very soon, those Temple Guard. So it's coming to a head here. Crows of Cain are fleeing for their nests, their rookeries up there in the mountains, going home to roost. Big breath attack from the Black Dragon. Again, those Temple Guard were on the move, so kind of didn't catch them fully flush. Want to make sure they're fully committed to a fight before you drop those breath attacks, I think. But that was the last one, and you can't really knock how the Supreme Sorceress is doing this game anyway. She's up to 2,500 value, and that is skyrocketing because of another Soul Stealer. She's gotten some really good ones this game, but Mazda Mundi is there to protect his Temple Guardians, sending an Apotheos to keep them healed as well. Knights of the Evident Law on one side, Cold One Knights coming in from the other side. Not a lot of units left on either side here in the deserts of Nahakara. It might very well come down to a monster mash between the Black Dragon, Basilodon, and Mazda Mundi on his toilet seat. It's been slightly Dark Elf favor on the balance of power, but that's shifted back more towards the middle here. And if you look at what both sides have, those Temple Guardians are going to be a tough unit to kill for these Cold One Knights. The Evan Claw coming in from one side, Cold One Knights coming in from the other side. Is that a net of Ammon talk? Yes, another one from Mazda Mundi to pin down the Knights of the Evan Claw as they attempt to make good on their escape. The Temple Guardians are focusing on the Cold One Knights now, and I think they'll be able to finish off that unit. And we're seeing the Raptor Cavalry is dropping low. The net is lasting a long time. Mazda does not have support from the Temple Guard right now. They're taking a calculated risk. While that Soul Stealer is draining their HP, they're moving towards the mobile elements, trying to side them down while they are rooted in place and unable to escape. But that leaves their Mage Priest alone against a Black Dragon. Basilodon not too helpful in a fight like this one, other than to heal and land the occasional blow. The Cold One Knights were felled. Temple Guard have been beasting it this game. And now it might well come down to a charge from the Knights of the Evan Claw against the Star Chamber Guardians. Both sides in tatters. Balance of power shifted in favor of the Bleak Hole Druki, in large part due to those nasty Soul Stealers. Cold One Knights continue to cycle back into the scrum, but they are so low on health and so low on models. The Temple Guard are right there to protect their lord. Knights of the Evan Claw are returning from a little soiree with the skink cohort near the edges of the map running some skink skirmishers from the field as well basilodon covered in wounds but those are being knitted up by apotheosis mazda mundi supporting his dinosaur the dinosaur can support him with the rev crystal knights of the ebon claw will be forced to continue hammer and anviling while the black dragon tries to provide that anchor that anvil for the knights of the ebon claws hammer Another Soul Slither, either her fifth or sixth this game. She's taken on the last stand of these Temple Guard, and Bounce of Power is in favor of the Dark Elves. This is the last stand of the Star Chamber Guardians. They have a lot to deal with right now. They've got to deal with Elite Armored Raptor Cavalry, and they have to deal with the full might of this Black Dragon, which has been, I mean, it's, it's probably over 4,000 value or close to it at this point in the game. Mazda Mundi is dropping low. Certainly not the same kind of duelist that a Black Dragon represents. But the Knights of the Evan Claw with a full surround off now. Bleak Hole Druki are fully committed. Supreme Sorceress dropping so fast to those Halberds. The Maquedles, the Makaweedles, the one and the two and the three Macarenas. And now the Black Dragon, even though it looks like it might rout off, coming back in for a rear charge on Mazda, trying to strike the head off the snake. And if Lord Mazda Mundi falls here, that would be a huge blow to the Lizardmen chances of winning this game. But these Star Chamber Guardians have incredible leadership, incredible defense, and killing power against large targets. And the Knights of the Ebon Claw, 
when they're surrounded by all these halberds and the fast attack interval of Temple Guard, they may not last very long. And what was looking like a Dark Hill victory might be swinging towards the Lizardmen now. It's not over yet. Raptor Cavalry is retreating and they will rally. The Supreme Sorceress have anything left in the tank. She's going for the Lord. Oh, that's, that's jank as hell. Fix this, please. I don't ever want to see it ever again. It never happened in game two. I don't know why it's a problem in game three. I guess it has something to do with the land button, but man, should have probably already landed one or two attacks here. We'll still manage to do so. Mazda Mundi down to 1400 health, 1100 and dropping fast. I don't think there will be any more casting from the Supreme Sorceress this game, but Mazda Mundi is like two hits from death now. Black Dragon's pulling through the entire unit of Temple Guard. Oh, that's so brutal. No large unit's ever gonna fare well against elite halberds in that manner, and that might have just caused a rout for the Dark Elves. Nice to Evan Claw getting Mazda Mundi. He routed! He just routed! But it's not gonna matter. The last stand of the Temple Guardians and the Rev Crystal managed to hold on, and that was epic. Star Chamber Guardians MVPs that game for sure. Now, the Supreme Sorceress was amazing too. 4,100 value, fantastic. Got great soul sealers all game long. A couple of the breath attacks were a little bit underwhelming, but it happens. They were all used against the unit that you really wanted to get rid of. Just typically want to have something to pin them down in place first. That way they can take the full brunt and not dodge half the breath attack or so. But man, those Star Chamber Guardians, 3,800 value. A lot of it against the Black Dragon and the Knights of the Ebon Claw in the end game. And that is exactly what you want to see from Temple Guard. Their Lord in danger. Their Slan Mage Priest about to fall to the evil predations of the Druki. And yet there, as that final bash and that final line of defense, the elite of the Lizardmen are there to protect, to imbue that Guardian aura. And ultimately, fell the evil creatures that have caused their people so many problems. Great game to Normal Swamp and VOD Bjorn Norlander. Really interesting, really fun builds. Hope you all enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next one.